All right, everybody, what is going on? Needs more drums here, back with a different kind of video today. I wanted to talk about the mods that I absolutely need to have in the game. And the reason I want to do this is because City Skylines is a great game, right, by itself. And I know there's a lot of people that love to play vanilla, but I'm telling you that just having a few of these essential mods can really change your gameplay experience to make it a lot more uh, user friendly and can access some you know, feature to the game that just, just really make the whole experience of building a city more enjoyable and a little bit less tedious as well. So today I'm going to go and talk through uh, like the 10 essential mods that I have in every single one of my save games. And I will preface this by saying that this does not include any kind of utility mod. So any kind of dependency mod such as Harmony or Prefab Hook or Patch Loader that, you know, they're, they're sort of like background script mods that are just required required for some of the other mods to work so those kind of go without saying um and then this also does not include any graphics mods just because or any kind of you know mods that i use for recording purposes uh i was going to do the graphics mods in a separate video and then also this does not include the traffic manager president edition the tmpe mod because that mod is really complex uh, there's a lot that goes on with it and um, I think that that lends itself to a separate video where it just kind of discussed that mod in a lot of detail. So with that being said, this video is gonna cover the top 10 mods that I always have in every single one of my save games. And I also wanna show you just really quickly how to use them. A lot of them are pretty simple and just add you know some little things into the game that make it way easier to play and uh, just make me a lot happier when playing City Skylines. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so before we get actually into our city here, the first mod that I wanna cover is actually the loading screen mod. And what this mod does is it is not necessarily, I wouldn't really count it as a gameplay mod, but this is definitely a must have if you are planning on honestly just playing City Skylines in general. City Skylines is not optimized very well. Uh, it gets, you know, the loading times are quite long. And as soon as you start downloading mods and assets, using the default, without using the loading screen mod, it'll have to load every single mod and asset individually. But what loading screen mod does, at least in my understanding, is it allows the game to recognize duplicate textures and load them together. And so it reduces, so any mod that has, you know, like a road mod, for example, or a road asset that uses the same road texture, it'll load that one time instead of loading it individually for every single different asset that uses that same texture. So that decreases your loading times substantially and you can load a heavily modded city with tons of custom downloadable assets and mods in a matter of minutes or even sometimes even seconds if your computer is strong enough. But that mod, you know, that same city may take 10 minutes to load or 20 minutes uh, by just, you know, not using the loading screen mod. So that is something that you need to grab 100% if you're planning on playing with any mods and assets. Definitely grab it. I would grab it as well because it's really, really effective and uh, reducing your load time. So we are in our little city of Modville here, just th threw this together real quick, it's very incomplete, but just, you know, to test out some of these. And so this is sort of one that goes without saying, but it's Move It, and Move It is a fantastic mod, but it allows you to do, it actually has some hidden functionalities as well that I don't think a lot of people are aware of, but at face value, Move It, indicated by this icon here, allows you to move anything you want in the city by, as you can see, I'm hovering over things that get highlighted in blue and I can literally just click, it turns to green and I can just drag anything wherever I want. I can also hold down the right mouse button and rotate the uh, whatever I have selected. So very useful in developing, you know, uh, suburbs and, and, you know, moving buildings kind of closer to one another. It's how you can achieve a lot of like any kind of wall to wall effect with commercial buildings or something like that, you can do that with Move It. And so what Move It also allows you to do that's really, really interesting is you can you can um, also select a group of things. So this makes it really easy if you're trying to select, say you wanna adjust, move an entire road, you could select the entire road. And you can also choose what you wanna select as well. So you can choose from buildings, props, uh, nodes in this case, like these are the nodes here, see if I only wanna select those. So it really, uh, you could do kind of, you know, do many different things with this mod. It, it really allows you a lot more creativity when making your city. And some other things that I don't think uh, some people often uh, realize when move it is that it has some additional functionalities as well, such as this little triangle icon here in the toolbox. You can access some different functionalities of move it, including 
um, the height tools, which are very, very useful. For me, I use this a lot when I'm building kind of roads or, or highways or elevated highways or even keys along a river. Making sure that everything is the same height can really uh, make things a lot easier to build. Like for example, if this road, you know, if this terrain made this road dip, I could actually make it, I could select the node, select two object height, and then pick an object highlighted in white and it'll make that road the same exact height as whatever object I select. Also, what's nice about this is that if you have a road, again, in this case, say that the road is on some uneven terrain and I want to make a gradual slope, say from here to here, what I could do is select all of the nodes that I want to be affected, including your start and end point, and then all of the nodes in between. I can go to slope objects and it'll create a nice evenly gradient, uh, gradient <laughs> even gradient from one point to another. So really, really helpful in, in uh, building roads, railroad tracks or anything like that. And then the last thing is, you know, you can uh, level things to terrain height. And this helps if you're, if you have a building, for example, and you know, when you, when you use move it sometimes um, in a feature, and I'll show you in a second, sometimes the buildings might end up like this. So what you could do is just to terrain height and it'll adjust it right down to the terrain height and it'll all look nice and pretty. And so move it also, um, it also contains these rotation tools, which I don't really use too much. And also some of these lineup objects can be very useful. Mirror objects can also be somewhat useful, but these are things that I have not really done too much with. I feel like I don't um, have the need to use these a ton. And also the, these two are actually pretty interesting if you ever wanna, wanna explore uh, these functionalities of Move It. So you can actually say you build something really cool, like you build a whole neighborhood with a lot of detail, you know, add trees, fences, little props, whatever. And you wanna, you know, save that for future use. You could actually select something and export it and it exports it as its own file. And then you can import those selections in different cities or different spots throughout your city. And it'll load up uh, all of the props and all the buildings that were in your selection. So I know it's something that people do oftentimes when they're, um, you know, trying to share some kind of asset with another asset creator, like on YouTube or something or you know, um, they wanna export a, a cool build for like a build competition. I know like some YouTubers do build competitions. So that's a, one way to do that is with, through that functionality. And so Move It, another thing that's cool about Move It is it offers a copy and paste functionality as well. So let's say that you know, you really like this building and you wanna move it, you know, you wanna bring it, or, or let's say we have a nice grid here and we wanna take these buildings and just move them to another part of the city. We can simply select, press Control C, and now I have a copy of these buildings, and I can just click and plop down wherever we want. So as you can see, that could be uh, very useful if you want to make big, um, you know, big suburb like suburb developments with uh, small, you know, low density single family homes. You can create one city block and then just kind of copy and paste it, maybe rotate it uh, as many times as you want, replacing some buildings here and there to quickly uh, build out a you know, an entire suburb. So now Move It on its own is um, pretty, offers some great functionality, but I think Move It is best used with, in conjunction with a lot of the other mods that I'm gonna talk about today. So on to number two in no particular order are the prop mods. I decided to group these all together because they're pretty simple in functionality and don't aren't really, you know, big heavy mods on your computer. Uh, so the first one is Prop and Tree Anarchy, which is, signified by this indicator here. So by pressing control P, I can toggle this on and off. And what this allows me to do is let's say I wanna take a tree and put it in somebody's yard. So with prop and tree anarchy off, I cannot place the tree in this person's yard because this is uh, an asset and you cannot place props on other assets that already have, you know, that are already developed and have props in them. But if I turn it on by pressing control P again, I can now place this tree in their yard. So that's a nice way to detail up some uh, some neighborhoods, especially if you use some other mods that get rid of you know vanilla trees or certain props. You can kind of customize certain areas and allow yourself to place the props uh, wherever you like. Along with this mod is Prop Line Tool, which allows you to take, again, let's use a any type of tree, for example. So let's say we wanna make sort of a hedge along, along uh, this the back of this lot here. Prop line tool allows you to do just that. It has a straight line, you can use a curve or you can use a free form, just like any kind of road network as well. And see, so you can make a, a custom line of props however you wish. 
And another nice thing about this that is a really cool feature is that you can actually adjust the spacing in between the props that you place. So by holding control and clicking before you put it down, control left click will bring you into this edit mode. And then you can simply select this second little dot here and drag to affect the distance. And then when you're done with this, you simply press control again and click and it will place the props down. And now a couple things that are really interesting about this mod as well is the fence mode. So if you are having individual, if you have downloaded a fence asset, that's not a network, you can actually make it to where instead of the prop being at the middle of your cursor, it'll sort of think of it as an end to end connection. So that way it enables you, it doesn't really work with bushes, but if you had a fence network, I would be able to, or a non-network fence, I would be able to show you. It'll allow you to drag the fence out and each, um, it'll only add a new fence prop once it reaches the end of you know, each individual uh, fence piece. And last but not least, the control panel is very, very effective in doing that as well. And with the control panel, what you could do is you could edit the spacing. If you have fence mode on, you could actually adjust some of the um, the linear fence fill is, uh, is, is really useful for that because it'll, if you wanna make a fence to a very specific length, it'll add another fence piece and just will you know drag it out kind of as far as your cursor goes so you, you can see that in practice if you have a if you have a non um a non-network fence but just know that if you're trying to fill a space and one fence prop is too long and you feel like you only need a part of it it'll allow you to just you know only make the fence as long as your cursor allows it to be so that is the prop line tool and then along with those i also like to use prop pre precision and prop snapping those just allow you to place props more effectively around your buildings. And all of those are kind of, you know, downloaded together. So that is prop anarchy, prop line tool, prop precision, and prop snapping at number two. And number three, along with the anarchies is the road anarchy mod indicated by the crazy rogue chirper at the top, pressing control A will activate and deactivate this mod. So when road anarchy, road anarchy is not active, you have to it limits kind of what you can do in terms of placing your roads. So it doesn't really let you, uh, it'll disconnect this power line. It won't let you place networks over one another. Um, it also will limit the amount of like angle of, of turns that you can make. So as you can see, this says the space is already occupied. I can't place a road here. The distance is too short. I can't place a road here. Uh, the angle's too steep. I can't place a road here. You know, just doesn't let me do much at all. Especially uh, it could be annoying when you're trying to place highway on ramps and you just can't get the angle quite right. So what this will do, pressing control A allows me to place roads literally wherever I want. So now I can make that angle or I can literally draw a road over another road. So things like that are really useful with road anarchy. And I love this mod because it can allow me to really create some, some tight angles uh, for highway on and off ramps. And then you can even, you know, for something like that, you can again, go in to move it and then just kind of the angle of a, of a, highway on ramp. So very effective mod, very helpful when designing your roads in your city. And also another part of road anarchy that's really useful is it comes with these different modes to sort of force different kinds of networks. So let's say that you want to make either a ground road, you don't want it to be elevated, you can click this button, it'll do that. This will allow the piece force the piece to be elevated. So if you want to make an elevated road on the ground, you could do that. Or if you want to make a ground road, uh, at a certain elevation, you can do that as well. So that really helps with all of that, as you can see, there you go. And then page up and page down will allow you to change the elevation height as well. And then finally, you can make bridges and tunnels as well. You can force those. And then you can also toggle collision. You could toggle node snapping. Uh, you could toggle road bending and you can toggle a straight slope. So we're similar to how move it would allow you to make an even slope between nodes. You could toggle a straight slope and it will do that automatically as opposed to just following the terrain like it would in the vanilla game. Number four is another network mod called Network Skins. And what Network, network Skins does is allows you to change various aspects of your road networks to make them more aesthetically pleasing to your liking, such as the surface texture or the actual color of the road. So for example, if I want to drag this road out here, but I wanna make sure that it seems like it's a little bit newer I can actually change the color of the pavement. And so the ne ne the next network that I drag will be darker. 
So it's kind of cool if you want to make, you know, like a newer neighborhood, you figure might have some more recently paved roads that might be a little bit more darker and not as worn out. You can do that by making, uh, just changing the texture of your road network. And also maybe if you're making a bus lane, you can make it sort of red or something and, and you know, imagine that it's a bus only road. What else you could do is hide different aspects of the um, the road, the props that appear on the road. You can also change the street lights of any road that you select. So if I wanna drag out a network and I want to, instead of the default street light, I wanna use maybe this random street lamp. I could do that and now you can see that my street lamp is different than the regular street light. And you can also apply this to existing roads just by hitting the upgrade button and you know, making any kind of adjustment if I wanna change the street light there. Now I have park street lights. So anything that you wanna do like that, it will work. And then it also allows you to change pillars on bridges, reset any settings for a selected network. So if you messed up and you feel like you don't like something, you can change it. And then some additional um, tools as well, which honestly I haven't really touched. So at number five, I wanna show you probably one of the most useful mods that I ever use in my cities. And I know my crime rate is getting out of control. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and fix this real quick. All right, they should stop complaining now. But anyway, at number five, I wanna show you a mod that I really, really think is a must have. And it is the Rico Revisited mod. And the reason that this mod is so important is because it also combines the functionalities now of plop the growables. So what this does is actually, so before we get into some of these more detailed mods, I actually wanna show you uh, two mods that I kind of use in conjunction with each other that just make um, finding things easier. And as the name might suggest, those mods are find it and resize it. So find it, indicated by this magnifying glass, allows you to open up a tab, which literally has every single asset, prop, building, network, anything that you can imagine that's in the game, trees, uh, they're at your disposal. And all you need to do is type in whatever you're looking for. So say for example, I wanna place down a fire station. I could type fire, press enter, and I get anything with fire in the name. And you can adjust some of these settings to where you know you can be narrow it down and be a little more specific. But this is just very useful, especially when you're trying to find indiv individual homes. And this is one of the things that I love to use this mod for, is if I'm trying to plop down a certain style of building for a city block, if I wanna make a certain you know style of suburb, you can go in and actually select different uh, building categories, such as you know your low density, high resident, lower high density residential. Um, then you can go you know your commercial buildings and even some of the more special ones like industry specific or some of the uh, the commercial specializations as well. And so you can go in and you know select one of these buildings. Say I want to create like an older style uh, kind of inner city suburb with these university packs. I could go in and I could plop down, you know, any of these buildings that I want. And so this is where the functionality of plop the growables comes in, which is now a part of this mod, because once I plop these buildings down, you can change the setting if you want to make these buildings historical. So they will never change. Even as they upgrade and level up, the appearance will stay the same after you plop them down. So like I said, it's really useful for making, if you're trying to make a more detailed city where you want a very specific look for an area, you can go in to find it, find the buildings that you want and plop them down to, and they won't change. So you'll always have that, that area looking the way you want. And it's very, very useful for that. And now some other uses for find it as well that I think some people don't um, realize that you can do is you can actually set different filters on the, uh, the buildings that you're looking for. So you can actually filter by asset creator, building height, building level, etc. And one thing that I really find effective in building out any kind of specific area is just this one here, which actually is the size of the buildings. So you can say I have property, like all of these spots are, if I wanna make some, some buildings that are four tiles deep to fill up this whole block, but I only wanna go for say buildings that are only two tiles wide, I could select two by four and it will give me all of the buildings that are two tiles by four tiles in the footprint. And so then I can make these really, really consistent property uh, sizes, you know, with all these buildings and it'll look really, really uh, uniform and clean and it eliminates kind of the weird orientation and, and property, random property sizes that you get from uh, zoning in vanilla. And so the Rico part of this mod is I don't actually have any Rico assets downloaded in this, in this save because I wanted to just exhibit the mods that 
I'm actually using in the video. But Rico, it allows you to download buildings that function um, as, you know, a, 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 the same way a building would function in the game. So usually this is some Rico buildings will include some industrial warehouses, some, you know, bigger skyscrapers, bigger offices, bigger apartment buildings. And you can actually change the settings of those buildings to a comment to whatever you want. And actually, I believe that you can even go into the Rico mod and oh, for example, here. So what you could do is actually you can go into the settings and select any building that you want. And you can actually make a local setting for this game or not for the game, sorry, for the building that will, you can adjust the number of, you know, for a residential building, you can adjust the number of residents. Uh, you can adjust the number of workplaces. You can adjust all types of things, what level it is, literally anything that you want. So it allows you to kind of change buildings within the, within the game. And it's especially useful for some assets that need the Rico mod to function correctly and actually be a functional building in your city. So those are two mods. This one's got a lot to it, but long story short, get it. It will, you, you'll thank me later. And now the next mod that I want to talk about is the extra landscaping tools mod. And so this one is a little bit, um, doesn't add too much, but it is definitely worth getting. And so, you know, in addition to the vanilla landscaping tools, you also have, it adds these things like paintable resources. So you can actually paint a section of resource if you're not happy with where the, uh, the resources appear at the map start when you, or, you know, at the start of a game, you can actually go ahead and paint your own resources wherever you like and hold left click to paint it and then hold right click to remove it. And so that really makes it useful when you're trying to plan out your industrial areas. You could sort of, you know, have a little bit free reign to do that as you wish. And also it gives you the opportunity to use the uh, the resource texture as a different ground texture as well. So say that I wanna make, you know, kind of a more sandier area, but I don't wanna use this sand texture that came with the map theme. I can actually, you know, maybe use this and get this sort of rough sand texture as well. So just another use for this mod that I think is really, really effective. And it also adds, you know, some other functional landscaping tools in the game that just make it really, really easy to um, make the, uh, kind of make the landscape that you want, especially these brush size tools and everything like that. I believe those are all part of this mod. And again, this is something that I would not even consider playing without because it just makes things so much easier. Similar to the extra landscaping tools mod is Surface Painter. And what Surface Painter allows you to do is paint down any kind of surface that are the main surfaces in the game. So for example, that's concrete, uh, this kind of dirt or gravel texture, another kind of dirt or ruin texture, and then a field texture. And also this texture, which is just, you know, <laughs> something that I never really use. But uh, yeah, these are really useful, especially when I'm trying to create sort of like an industrial area, for example. If I want to make just, you know, like a bigger kind of factory, what I'll do is I'll paint with surface painter and then I'll go into find it and grab an industrial building that I want. And then maybe say go into a uh, going to find it again and search for any kind of fence. Set my filter to all so it'll give me all of my results. And then I can use, you know, prop and road anarchy to make this fence around the area. And now I have a nice little complex and I can even go again into find it and, you know, look for some sort of industrial props. Like for example, I want to place down some containers. And you know, then you can really detail up some of your areas with just these few simple mods. So again, that's something that I really like to use and a very effective mod that adds just a few uh, quality of life things into the game. And the last mod that I want to show you guys is something called Hide It. And Hide It for me is a really, really nice way to make the game look way more realistic. And so what Hide It does is if you go into your options and you go into the Hide It settings, you can hide any kind of thing that pops up, any of the buildings, any of the, you know, the UI panels, any of the objects. And so typically what I like to, to get rid of is the big billboards, the neons and the logos that appear on a lot of the commercial buildings. You know, some of them have like a giant ice cream cone or like a giant billboard that just makes it look a little bit, you know, kind of unrealistic and a little cartoony. So I don't really like to have those. And also I like to get rid of uh, some of these tree and prop ruinings, the little dirt patches around the props and especially the pollution colors that, you know, are just, just make the industrial areas just look so ugly because I mean, in reality, 
having some industry wouldn't kill all of the trees around it, or at least I hope not. So getting rid of some of these really helps um, make it make your city look a lot better. And again, it's totally customizable and there's tons of things that you can remove if you want to. But I did realize I forgot to mention just another quality of life mod real quick before I sign off. And that is, it's called resize it. So resize it allows you to actually change the size of this menu for anything that you see. And so I like to have it a little bit bigger, especially when I'm using find it, for example, and I'm trying to find buildings rather than looking through a one by seven, I much prefer to, you know, have maybe two or three. So I could see more buildings at once and kind of all of the buildings that I have to work with rather than having to scroll so much to get to uh, see all the buildings that I want. So yeah, so with that being said, that is my top 10 essential mods for City Skylines in 2023. And I hope that you guys learned a little bit or, you know, if you are new to the game, I hope that I could uh, help, you know, kind of get you started with the whole modding thing. And I know it can be int intimidating and there's tons of mods to choose from on the Steam Workshop, but these are the ones that will really just make your gameplay experience a, a whole lot better, especially like Find It and Plop the Growables. I mean, or the Rico mod with Plop the Growables, <laughs> sorry. But um, yeah, there are some great mods out there. I highly encourage you to uh, be careful with mods because you know, they can break your game if you don't install them correctly. And it's very easy to go overboard with the amount of mods that you download. But I would recommend starting with these, starting small and learning how the game functions and how each one impacts the game. And if you feel like there's something that you need and you know, you just you just don't have access to it with, with the vanilla game or any of these mods, go check out the workshop. Chances are you'll probably be able to find something there that uh, will help solve your issue. And yeah, stay tuned for some more videos of some more mods that I love to use uh, besides these essential ones. But in the meantime, have a great what, uh, rest of your day and or week and or month or whatever. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.